Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to graph the reciprocal function with a couple given information, uh, given transformations, I'm sorry. So basically, you know, uh, what we're basically going to do is, again, look at the families of functions that we've done and used transformations before, and just basically take the parent graph, which I've provided for you. Here's the parent equation, y equals 1 over x. Here's what the graph looks like without any transformations. I had to write the, I wrote the, um, I did these dotted asymptotes here, uh, kind of just off the x and y axis, just so you can kind of make sure you could visualize and see them. But this vertical asymptote is actually at x equals 0, and this one's at y equals 0. So they are actually on the axis, just so you could visually see them. I wanted to put them off there so the red and the black didn't um, intertwine. Then we have y equals a divided by x minus h plus k. And if you remember, in our families of functions, what we talked about is how does you know, our graph get transformed? Um, remember, x minus you know, h, that's inside the function. That's going to be shifting your graph left to right. Plus k, that's going to be shifting your graph up or down. And then obviously, a, remember, deals with our reflection as well as like our compression or our stretching. Now, we're not going to get much into the compression and stretching. I do have one where it's negative. Where we'll talk about reflection here. Um, but basically, we're just going to kind of get into you know, the shifting of the graph left and right, up or down. Because once we start to kind of get into um, a being a number other than 1 or negative 1. Then we start using, you know, using graphing utility or a table of values. Um, but basically, we just want to remind ourselves you know, what exactly are the transformations that's going on. So the best thing I like to do when I'm graphing is, again, identify the transformations. Now remember, it's x minus h, right? So x minus h. So what's the value of h? h's value is positive 2. So you're actually going to be shifting the graph over two units to the right. Now, when you are graphing the reciprocal function, Remember, not only do you have this hyperbola of these kind of two little graphs here, you also have the asymptotes. So when you're graphing, you're going to be transforming not only the asymptotes, but also the kind of two low hyperbolas. And I, don't, I didn't really include any points and you know, we're going through this. So we're going to be sketching the graph. It's not going to be an exact graph. But basically, if I know that I have a horizontal vertical asymptote at 0 and 0 for x equals 0 and y equals 0, if I'm now telling myself that I have to go right two units. Therefore, I'm going to, the um, horizontal asymptote is not going to move. But if I shift this over two units, the vertical asymptote is now going to be moved over two units. So I'm going to make sure I draw two of them. But now my vertical asymptote has been shifted over two units. And then I can basically now just write on graph so it looks something like that one. And again, we, there, we're going to get into graphing um, rational and reciprocal um, certain ideas. And you could follow some of those tips that we use in other videos to help graph a more accurate um, picture or a more accurate graph for this, if you'd like to. But for this, is just kind of more of an introductory of how to use our transformations. So here, uh, my transformation is x plus 2. Notice I'm not adding the 2 inside the function, inside those parentheses, which I didn't show. This should be have parentheses around it. Um, so therefore, it's adding outside of it. So that's just going to tell me I'm going to shift. Whoa. I'm just going to take my graph and go up 2. So again, draw my x and y axis here. Okay. Well, now, the vertical asymptote, when you shift a graph up 2, the vertical asymptote is already vertical. So that's not going to move. But now my horizontal asymptote. And being at 0, if I shift it up 2, is now going to be up 2. And then, now I've created both my asymptotes. Now I can just go ahead and sketch my graph. And we'll learn how to find the x and the y-intercepts. And then, you again, you could also use the table of values to find other points. But remember that the shape of these graphs are going to be exactly the same as the, gray, as the shape of the parent graph. H and K, all that's doing is just sliding this graph left or right, up or down. So now we have multiple transformations. Now I have x plus 3 and x minus 1. So now that's going to tell me to go left 3 and down 1. Again, remember it's opposite. If it's x plus 3, you're actually going to the left. Because this can be written as x minus a negative 3. So x minus h, x minus negative 3. So therefore, neg a negative 3 tells you to go to the left. So I go ahead and graph. So now both of my asymptotes are going to move. Remember, your asymptotes start at y equals 0 and x equals 0. But if I shift my graph 3 units to the left, I'm now going to have a horizontal asymptote at x equals negative 3. And if I go down 1, I'm now going to have a or vertical asymptote at x equals 3. 
If now if I go down 1, now I'm going to have a horizontal asymptote at x equals negative 1. OK? So now let's go ahead and get into the um, graphing form of it. Again, we're just following our parent graph. And again, I'm just asking you to, I'm just asking to sketch it so I'm not asking you know, to be so detailed. But so we'll just graph our former shape here again. OK. All right, into the last one. Now, the only difference with this one is, yes, we have our two transformations, but now we also have a negative. Now, remember, the negative for your a is going to tell you to reflect over the x-axis. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to graph my graph how I would do it, and then I'm actually going to reflect over the x-axis last. OK, so x minus 1 is going to tell me to go right 1. Minus 2 is going to go down negative 2. And then I have a negative a, which would be reflect x axis. OK. So we go ahead and graph it. OK. If I go ahead and graph it here, um, asymptote is being shifted to the right 1. So therefore, instead of it being at 0, my vertical asymptote is going to be x equals 1. I'm shifting my graph down 2. So instead of my horizontal asymptote being at 0, it's now going to be at negative 2. So I have x. Uh, equal one negative one. Okay. Now again, my graph for without the reflection, I know it looks something like this, right? And I'll just use dash to kind of remind you that that's not actually going to be the graph. So now, if I was to reflect that over the x-axis, if I was you know going to have the reflection over that, it would actually look like this. Okay. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, or you'd have your reflection first, and then you could do your transformations. Probably make sure that just know that it's reflected about the horizontal axis would probably make the most amount of sense to think about it. Because um, you're not actually reflecting it there from the x-axis. You can reflect it first and then do the transformations. But either way, because um, notice the reflection here. If you were to reflect it, it looks like this. And then just do transformations right one down two. OK, so there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph the reciprocal function with transformations. Thanks. Hello.